An almost unbelievably simple toy to study Newton's second and third laws and rotational dynamics, the straw propeller needs just a couple of straws of different gauge and some tape. By making a handful of holes in the two straw pieces, one is able to create a blowing straw and a propeller that beautifully demonstrates Newton's third law. The propeller rotates in the opposite direction to which the air exits the straw. Some variations that you can try. Double the length of the rotating straw and observe the effect on its speed. Half the length of the rotating straw and observe the effect on its speed. Make a single corner hole on the rotating straw. Make the toy hands-free, that is, you shouldn't need to block the open end of the blowing straw with your finger. Make two more diagonally opposite holes in the rotating straw. Try making the same toy with straws of the same diameter. Some more questions. How does propeller length affect the speed? Can you change the direction of rotation of the rotating straw? How fast do you think the propeller is rotating? Can you think of other examples of action-reaction engine? Put the toy under a fan instead of blowing air yourself and see if it works. There are various ways to make larger and more involved projects as well as experiment further with as simple a toy as this. Below we have given two suggestions. One of the ideas is make funnels to capture wind and channelize it into a turbine similar to the rotating straw of this activity. Use a plastic bag and estimate the volume of your lungs, should be about 2 to 3 liters. Now fill up your lungs again by taking a deep breath and blow through the blowing straw and calculate how long it takes to empty your lungs. Based on these estimates, calculate the speed at which air comes out of the thin straw. Use this value to determine the force with which the air comes out at each end. The force the straw experiences at each end, but in the opposite direction, should be the same according to Newton's third law. This will help you determine the torque the straw experiences. Assuming the straw is a hollow cylinder, calculate the mass of the straw given the moment of inertia for a hollow cylinder along its perpendicular axis is given by the following equation, where m is the mass of the straw, r is its radius, and l its length. The straw propeller shows off two major principles in its operation. Newton's third law, which says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The straw moving in the opposite direction with the same amount of force as the ejected air, thus causing it to spin. As the air flows through the blowing straw into the rotating straw, it is ejected at relatively high speed from the corner holes made at either end of the rotating straw. Since the holes are at diametrically opposite ends of the straw, it experiences moments in the same direction from both ends of the straw and hence spins rather fast in one direction. Newton's second law, because of the law of conservation of momentum, which is angular momentum when applied to rotation around an axis, the smaller propellers with less inertia accelerate more when the same force is applied, thus reaching faster speeds. Or to put it another way, when a torque is applied to an object, it begins to rotate with an acceleration inversely proportional to its moment of inertia. These beautifully stated and super fundamental laws of motion were formulated by Newton in the 17th century. Newton was an inscrutable character. His contribution to the world of science is unparalleled in human history. From mechanics to optics to sound to astronomy to gravitation to calculus to much, much more. His contributions have stood the test of time and institutions he was a member of and headed at various points in his life such as the Royal Society in London or Trinity College, Cambridge, continue being the pinnacles of learning, academics and education in the world today. What was intriguing in this whole thing is that Newton himself thought of himself as an alchemist, which firmly falls in the realm of pseudoscience with our present understanding. What was most remarkable about Newton's work was that almost all that he theorized and proved, from gravitation to calculus and optics, in his famous Latin tomes such as Principia Mathematica and Optics were all done using geometry. It's hard to believe, but one only needs to see these books to believe the genius of his mind. Simple techniques to describe the most fundamental of laws, all generalized and formulated by him to make the modern world possible. 
There may be debates as to which individual has had the greatest impact on human history, but you would not be far off if you said it was Sir Isaac Newton. As for the man himself, he may have been ruthless with his peers, but his humility to the outside world and in history lies in the following quotes of his own. He once said, If I have seen further than others, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. I do not know what I may appear to the world, but to myself I seem to have been only a little boy, playing on the seashore and diverting myself in now and then finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than ordinary, whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. This toy is similar in operation to an ancient Greek steam engine called the Eolipile. Though proposed much earlier, credit for building and refining the Eolipile goes to Heron of Alexandria, circa 10 AD. Named after the Greek god of air, it used expanding steam to induce motion. Many of you would have discovered that the orientation of the taping of the rotating straw is very crucial. It has to be done on one plane, which happens to be the same plane at which the diamond holes occur. If by mistake you have taped the straw in the orthogonal plane that is 90 degrees from the intended position, the straw would not rotate. Have you figured out why this is? Another common mistake is to make the corner holes on the rotating straw on either end of the straw but not diametrically opposite. This also prevents the straw from spinning. Why is this? The blowing straw hole needs to necessarily be within the rotating straw. If this isn't the case, the rotating straw won't rotate since the air won't pass through its corner holes. A lot of variety will be noticed in the rotating speeds of the propellers. Also, the slight variation in hole sizes and locations will create slightly different sounds as the propeller rotates. The only way to change the direction of rotation, without making any additional cuts or taping existing ones, is to simply flip the orientation of the rotating straw as you place it over the blowing straw. Some learning objectives from this particular activity. Verifying Newton's third law by demonstrating how the propeller rotates in the opposite direction. Newton's second law which determines the speed of rotation that's dependent on the torque and moment of inertia of the rotating straw. Some scientific terms. Momentum or linear momentum is the product of the mass and velocity of an object. The rate of change of momentum of an object is nothing but a measure of the net force acting on the object. This is nothing but Newton's second law. The rotational speed or velocity is the measure of how quickly an object is rotating, measured usually in radians per second, but could also be in degrees per second or revolutions per minute, or any ratio of change in angle to change in time. Torque, this is the corollary of force in the linear space. It is a torque that causes rotational motion, often simply termed a moment. Mathematically, it is a product of the force applied to the perpendicular distance. It is also the product of the moment of inertia of an object and its angular acceleration. Angular momentum is a rotational corollary to linear momentum. It is a product of the linear momentum and the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation. It is also the product of the moment of inertia and the angular velocity. Moment of inertia is the rotational corollary to mass. It is the product of every single point of mass on a rotating object and the square of its distance it is from the axis of rotation. Some prerequisites for this activity. A basic understanding of Newton's laws. Basic ideas of speed, velocity in the linear space. Idea of rotation and spinning. Simple motor skills to cut straws, taping the straws, etc. This propeller also works on wind energy. Observe the propeller's turbines used by windmills. What difference do you see between the shape of the windmill turbines and the one in this toy? Have you seen a turbine or a fan similar to the propeller in this toy in your daily life? The simple phenomenon of material being ejected, thereby resulting in motion, is of course how aeroplanes and space rockets are propelled. In the case of planes, jet engines act like massive exhaust fans and pump air backwards, thereby propelling the plane forwards. In the case of rocket, huge amounts of fuel are ejected downwards, thereby allowing the rocket to shoot upwards. Perhaps the term rocket science is a misnomer after all, given what a simple principle is used to power a rocket. Newton's third law is one of the most simply stated and obvious sounding laws. However, when analyzing its intricacies, it is easy to overlook its nuances and misinterpret the law completely. 
Silly as this may sound, it is what it is. We hope that playing and experimenting with this wonderfully simple straw propeller has given you a better and clearer understanding of Newton's third law and a quick insight into his second law, as well as the tools to make measurements and run a variety of experiments and variations, which are the essence of any scientific exploration. Thank you.